Thanks a lot. We hear a lot about um, the legal aspects of it. We hear a lot about freedom, free movement of capital, free movement of the people. But what you always have to think is about death and taxes. And that's also very important for us because if we talk about freedom, we also have to think about taxes because if you don't think about taxes, then your freedom will not be very in a long time because then in a crucial point you will look at prison time, criminal records and stuff like that. And that's the reason why I want also to bring this topic up. Because in the end of the day, the tax guy wants always the money and therefore we have to look at it. Thanks. Okay. So yes, I think most people in the crypto space and also if you're an entrepreneur, what's the most important value for you? It's freedom. It's the freedom that you can do what you want. It's the freedom that you can move where you want. It's the freedom that you can do what you want. And that's for a lot of people the reason to go into the crypto space because they say, I don't want to be part of the normal system. I want to be part of the fiat system because then government will rule me. And that's the reason why they go into the crypto space. But what they have to think about is, even if you're in the crypto space, you are in the government system because you are in a taxable system. And that's the point what we want to mention here. So yes, you can move around. And yes, in a lot of countries, there are no exit taxes, for example, with crypto. Here today, we will have a look on the taxation system, for example, Germany, Austria, Liechtenstein, Switzerland, to give you a little feeling about that. And if you see about that, there are no exit taxes. So if you have, for example, crypto money, you don't will be taxed if you leave the country. For example, if you have assets in company, then there are exit taxes in the European Union. That means if I have a company somewhere else, I left the, uh, the country, then I will be taxed, even if I don't sell my company. If I'm invested in crypto, for example, I can leave the country without any taxation. So you are more free about that. But what you have to think about is, Yes, I can be free and I can to choose that I don't want to pay any taxes. Because we have a lot of crypto clients who say, why should I pay tax? Because the government will, don't recognize, will not recognize us that I have crypto assets. Yes, this freedom you have. But the problem is what you have to think about. If you are um, find out that you have crypto assets and you don't tax us, then you have a look at tax evasion. And then it depends in which country you are. For example, if you are living in Liechtenstein or Switzerland, tax evasion is not so much a big problem because it only costs you money. So if you have later a possibility that you catch you, you just pay. For example, if you are living in countries like Germany, you can look to prison time up to 10 years. So you can see also in comparison to other criminal aspects, tax evasion in Germany is a very bad thing. And even with small numbers, it's a very bad thing. So, for example, if you just evade 50,000 euro in a year, you have two years possible criminal time, prison time in Germany. And 50,000 is, if you look on 2021, if you have some lucky punches, not so much money. If you have more than 1 million tax evasion, you have to go to prison, even if you're a nice guy, even if it's just a small portion of your um, capital gain, you have to go. And that's a big difference between countries like Germany, Austria, in comparison, for example, Liechtenstein, Switzerland. The worst thing that can happen in Liechtenstein or Switzerland that you pay three times of the taxes to the government. So you wait one million, okay, you have to pay a fee of three million. But nothing else happens. So it's even worse in Switzerland to drive too fast than to evade taxes. In Germany, it's the other aspect, because in Germany we have a lot of automobile um, industries, therefore you can drive very fast. It's just a very small portion of money you have to pay. But if you evade taxes, that's a problem because evade of taxes is fraud to the system. And that's the government don't like. What we also hear a lot is, yes, but at the moment the government is not possible to find it out that I evade taxes. Because how should the normal tax authority find out that I have crypto? Yes, that's true at the moment. But if you look back 15 years, for example, there was no exchange of information in this world. There was no exchange of information on demand. There was no automatic exchange of information. Now we live in the financial industry in a fully transparent world. That means if I want to get a bank account, Liechtenstein, Switzerland, 
I have to show all my assets. I have to prove that the money is taxed and is regularly taxed. And nowadays, if I have a foreign bank account, every year they send the information to my home country. So even, yes, at the moment, it's a crypto assets can't be found out by the tax authority. What's in five, 10 or 15 years? In Germany, we have limitations on 15 years. So the German government has a time period of 15 years to find out that you have crypto assets. In Liechtenstein, it's much easier. It's only five years. So you just have to wait five years. Then you are fine. You save the money. But for example, in Germany, 15 years. So if it's in 15 years, they find out, then you have to pay back the taxes. You have to pay interest. You have to pay also a penalty. And in a worst case scenario, you have to go to prison. So that's also choose wisely in which country you are living. Because a lot of people from crypto space think, okay, Germany is very attractive because for holder it is. Because in Germany, we don't have any wealth tax, for example, and after one year, no taxation at all on crypto gains. In Liechtenstein or Switzerland, we have a wealth tax. So every year you pay taxes on your crypto assets if you declare it. If not, you know the fine, the fee you have to pay. But in Germany, after one year, it's free. But the problem is, if you are invested not only as a holder, if you have, for example, also DeFi investment, staking investment, lending investment, and then you have to pay taxes on this income. And that's what we are seeing in the practice, because most of the clients not only just hold assets for over one year, most of the clients have short-term investments. They use bots, for example. They invest in ICOs. They use staking, farming, lending, DeFi protocols then they have a full taxation on it. And in Germany, it's up to 45% plus church tax, because if you're religious, you have to pay also. Then you're nearly up to 50% in Germany. And if you're seeing 50% taxation and you just have a capital or income of 100,000, you are over the 50,000. That means prison time if you forget it. So it's very easy in Germany to come into this problem. And the state has 15 years time to find it out. So even in the next 10 years, if they have not the possibility, the blockchain, don't forget. So after 1, 11, 12 or 13 years, they can catch you. So yes, you have the possibility. Also what you hear from Thomas was, in Liechtenstein there was a blockchain act. I was very disappointed that I'm not invited in this group because taxation wasn't part of it. Because from a tax system, it's over 100 year old, the tax code, and there's no mention of crypto. Why? Because we as tax guys, we don't look what's in the normal business. We always look what's beside. So we look on the economical side. That means substance over form. If you have a tokenized chair or you have a chair on a paper, it doesn't matter at all for us as a tax guy. We look always what is the economic story behind. So we don't have to define what is lending, what is farming, what is an ICO. We look what is behind of that. And if it's, for example, a capital gain of some kind of asset, we tax it. So we don't need every year a new tax law. We just look what's the idea behind of the business, what you are doing, and then we tax it. We also tax the system even if it's illegal. So for example, if you're a drug dealer, you have to pay taxes on it. So even if it's not allowed by the state, you have to have it. So what we learn also as a tax consultant, for people who say, okay, I do drag, drug dealing, but I want to evade taxes, they say, okay, I can wash it with my China restaurant. So if I declare the asset there, I'm free from the tax side. So always think, you have a tax side even if you're doing a business what is not allowed. So even if you do OTC trades, for example, what are not allowed from the European Union, you have to pay taxes on it. So every economical aspect. And therefore, yes, the tax systems also in the European Union are mostly not designed for crypto assets, not designed for blockchain, but it's not relevant for us because we tax it at all, because we look what's behind of it. What's very special for tax guys is that we are not so much into technology like Thomas as an um, IT guy. So we have very special token um, protocols. What was very surprising for us was the base token. I don't know what, um, if anybody knows the base token. The base token 
produces new tokens. That means it could be that you buy one token and after the new day you have two tokens, even if you don't buy any one, because they change the number of the tokens to regulate the price. That's from a tech side very critical because then we saw for our clients that they bought one token but they sell two. How do we explain it to the authorities that I sell two tokens when I'm only buying one? And that's what you have to explain then to the authorities because the normal tax authority persons are nearly 50 years old and they're normally working just part-time. So if you want to call, for example, a German tax authority, then they come um, the news or the message from the telephone, I'm just a part-time person, I work 9 to 11 a.m. every day. And these persons, you have to explain such topics like a base token, DeFi, or crypto assets. And that's very hard. And that's also very challenging in the practice because in the end of the day, of course, if you have a capital gain, you put on 45%. That's not very complicated. What is complicated is to get the data. How do I show that I have a capital gain? How do I show that I have an earning? And how do I have to document it? Because there is no piece of paper from a financial mm -hmm. institution which documents it. I can't say to their authority, please have a look on the blockchain. Please print it out and send it to you. And that was also what we are seeing in practice. The normal tax authority don't really prove it. What they want to see is documentation. So what we send them is normally about documentation, 100, 200 pages of um, transactions. And then say, okay, fine, we trust you because you sent a lot of transactions. We never had the situation that they really go into the transactions, but they want something to see that they can say, okay, we proved it, we checked it. So if we have special um, transaction, just explain it. Just do a documentation about it and try to explain because what's also very important in taxation and also in regard to tax authorities is not that you do it right, but that you show everything. So if you don't want to go to prison, just gives the authority every information. So what we are doing is full books of documentation. That is what I'm doing. I do one, I do two, I do three. And then say, okay, that's tax free because we think ABC. It don't have to be tax free. What you only have to do is to document every process. And then it's your part of interpretation that it's tax free. And the tax authority can say, no, it's not. But at the moment we don't see it. What you can't do is say it's tax free and you can't and you don't say why it is. So give a lot of information about it, say, here, look on the protocols, that's everything what I did, and then fine. So that's also for us very important. Document and give them the information. You don't have to be right about it. So at the moment, there's a lot of things very unclear about taxation. But what you not allowed is to lie. So show them everything and then give your own interpretation of it. Yes, of course, what's very important is most of the programs, what you saw, Coinly, coin tracking, and so on, don't give you a full picture. If you're not a person who just buy, hold and buy strategy, we saw with every program that they're not complete. So don't trust these programs. And that's also the reason why I always say, please consult someone, please check it. So if you use programs like coin tracking, Coinly, and so on, please be very careful about it and please check it by yourself or by an advisor who can work with that because normally there are a lot of missing transaction about that. Just as a brief warning, we never saw a program at the moment what really build everything or show every transaction, even if you're building like topics like DeFi, NFTs or chain crossings because chain crossings is very hard for the programs to track on. So in the end of the day, it's documentation. In the end of the day, even if you're in the crypto space, please be aware there is a tax system. And if you live in a country and if you have your domicile there, you are part of this tax system. And then you should play with the rules because if you don't play with the rules, your freedom, what you like, could be very limited by the authority because tax evasion is something what the authorities don't like. And they go very far. Also, for example, with Germany, if you are living abroad and you have tax debts, they don't continue your passport. So that's also a possibility that we have people of Germany who are living in South America say, what they want to do? I have tax debts in Germany, but they can't do anything. 
Yes, but the person then wants to continue his passport to move and travel. And the German authority said, we don't continue because you have tax debts and therefore you are limited where you are living. So also think about the arm could be very long what they want to do about that. So thanks a lot. And if you have questions about the taxation, please. Yeah. Please. Of course, you have a friend. <laughs> It's 10 years. Ten years, ten years. But it's better for um, if you die, then it's only three years. So it's also if you have a very <laughs> old person, wait until he dies, because then you just have to declare three years until 10. Yes, and but you always have to think about the wealth tax. And what you also have to think, the most cases from tax evasion don't come up by the tax authorities. Nowadays, the banks are the best friends of the tax authorities. And most clients, what we get is not because they come to us and say, I want to be tax compliant now. No, the most clients, what we get is they go to a bank, they want to buy a house, a boat, want to pay it with fiat, send the crypto money to the bank, and then the bank asks, please, show us is all the money declared and go all the time period back and prove it that it's declared. And then the clients come to us and say, I have to declare it afterwards because I want my money changed into fiat. So that's the normal days because the banks are the bad friends. And we invite at the moment more um, legal opinions for banks than for tax authorities. And that's the point, because if you have this wallet and say, OK, I transfer it then and I'm fine because the tax authority don't find out, yes, but the bank will take it. And that's a problem. And that's also a very funny topic, because a lot of people go to Liechtenstein, Switzerland, because they think from the past, I can evade money there. If you want to evade money and if you want to wash money, you go to Germany. Because <laughs> Germany is the most easy one. And we have a lot of clients who don't get from the crypto space a bank account in Liechtenstein, Switzerland. Then we go with them to a German bank, and it's no problem at all. Go to a legal, a regional German bank. You have just five or six pages of compliance documents, and they do everything. If you go to a Liechtenstein or Switzerland bank, you have 100 pages. You have to declare every point, every transaction to get a bank account. So Germany is the most easy way. Washing money, it's also about um Yeah, 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 for example, a client. And for example, we have a client who want to finance his girlfriend because, and also the wife shouldn't know about that. With the Liechtenstein Foundation. <laughs> and with no, with the Liechtenstein Foundation, it's not possible because of the KYC rules. With the German Foundation, it's no problem at all. So we go with this client to a German family foundation. <laughs> to support his girlfriend, because that was the easiest way. So uh, sometimes you have to go around, and that's the point. With Germany, it's the easiest way. But then you go to jail. <laughs> Only if you're not tax compliant, but you don't have to be compliant to the wife. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's then two o'clock. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matthias. Now is uh, the time for uh, Martin Kaintas and Apostolos Kalovelonis. Please go on stage. Thank you very much.